ଲେଟର ଷ୍ଟାର୍ଟ ଷ୍ଟାର୍ଟ କରିବା ଯେତିକି କିଛି ଡାଉଟ ଥିବ ମୁଁ କହିବି ଏବଂ ଦେଖିଲେ ତ କହିପାରିବେ ଆଉ କଣ ସୋ ଉଇ ଷ୍ଟାର୍ଟେଡ ଦିସ କୋର୍ସ ବାଇ ଡିଫାଇନିଂ ହ୍ୱାଟ ଇଜ ରେଡିଏସନ ଡେଫିନେସନ ଉଇ ଗେବ ଆଜ ଏନି ଡିଷ୍ଟରବାନ୍ସ ଅଫ ଇଲେକ୍ଟ୍ରୋମାଗ୍ନେଟିକ ଫିଲ୍ଡ ଆଣ୍ଡ ଦ ଡିଷ୍ଟରବାନ୍ସ ୱାନ୍ସ ଏ ଡିଷ୍ଟରବାନ୍ସ ଇଜ କ୍ରିଏଟେଡ then that disturbance propagates away from the source of disturbance now the source at the source there is a cause because there is a cause creates a disturbance some disturbance is created due to some other action that action is called cause and if there is a cause the effect is the disturbance that disturbance takes away the nature of the disturbance from the source of the disturbance so the disturbance of electromagnetic field propagates away from the source of disturbance and the total power in the wave does not decay with the disturbance total power is conserved that is most important the power remains conserved which means energy is conserved energy remains conserved total energy remains con- content of energy is fixed and the power goes away from the source now the cause is a time bearing current if there is a time bearing current source then that can uh, result in a disturbance uh, it has uh, an association with an accelerated charge because you know that current the moment we say current current means moving charges if charge moves then that results in current but if that charge accelerates in the process of motion if it accelerates then we get a disturbance that creates a disturbance we will discuss that in the next slide why an accelerated charge creates a disturbance or results in radiation that we will discuss in this slide what we did is we started uh, with the left most uh, picture that you are seeing that a charge is moving with uniform velocity it is at point a a charge q positive charge we took a positive test charge you can take a negative charge test charge also we started with a positive uh, test charge Uh, moving with uniform velocity and it is at point a when we started looking at it it is at point a then it accelerated it was in a, in uniform velocity then it started accelerating from point a to point b point b is shown in the green zone then as it reaches point b then it again starts moving with uniform velocity so at point a velocity is uniform at point b velocity is been uniform in between these two points a to b it has accelerated which means if it has a velocity u at point a it has acquired a new velocity v at point b and both these velocity are uniform now there is a question if it was moving with uniform velocity why it was not radiating when it started accelerating why it started radiating as we are going to see and now but before acceleration why it was not radiating the answer lies in the physics that uh, you have read in school and early college days now when you started reading physics you read two types of frames of reference one frame is called galilean frame other frame is called lorentzian frame right so if you remember these two the in the galilean frame of reference when the charge is moving or when anything is moving 
with uniform velocity if you take two reference frames one frame is at rest in which you are observing you are the observer other frame is moving with uniform velocity then the physical phenomenon does not change in either of the frame frames this is called inertial frame also in the inertial frame the inertial frame always moves with a uniform velocity with respect to the reference frame so if you have a reference frame and an inertial frame then there will be no change in the physical characteristics now what does that mean that means in our case suppose we take a electrostatic charge its field is e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q upon r square now let us take that is in the static frame which is not moving or in the reference frame now you move to the moving frame which is moving with uniform velocity now if it is moving with uniform velocity then what will be r r will become r dash which is r dash is equal to r minus b into t where v is the uniform velocity with which it is moving now if you look at the nature what has happened to the nature in the first one when it is in rest it is e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q upon r square when it is moving it is q upon r dash square where r dash is equal to r minus vt which means if the fields were radial they were going out radially from the source or the charge in the rest frame or the reference frame then they are moving out radially in the moving frame because in the moving frame r dash replaces r and r dash is linearly related to r r dash is equal to r minus vt so there is no change in the lines of forces they are radially outward in both the frames so if it is moving with uniform velocity when a charge is moving with uniform velocity the lines of forces are radially outward from the charge so long as it is moving with uniform velocity now suppose the charge accelerates due to some disturbance the charge accelerates when the charge accelerates we cannot say that r dash is equal to r minus v the real linear relationship ends there so it will not be in an inertial frame the frame now is no more inertial in nature the, by the frame i mean i mean the frame which is accelerating the accelerating frame is lorentzian in nature in the lorentzian frame what happens in the lorentzian frame in the denominator you get 1 upon root over of 1 minus b square by c square this is something that was proposed by einstein while proposing his theory of relativity now when b is very small compared to c the denominator is 1 so lorentzian frame is same as your galilean frame or the inertial frame but when you move to lorentzian frame this does not occur 
Now, in the Lorentzian frame, we take into account the acceleration. Now, because now there is an acceleration, the Lorentzian frame comes into picture. Now, what happens in that period? Now, let us look at the first picture, which is at the leftmost uh, side on the screen, the yellow one. From Q, we are seeing that lines of forces are going outward. And the observer is at a distance Ra. A is in reference to the point A where Q is located. Now, what will be the time required for the electromagnetic waves or the electric field to reach A, RA point? From A, it will go to RA in a time if it is, the distance is R and it is moving with uniform velocity, velocity is V, but field moves with speed C, electric field, and they move with speed C, which is the speed of light. So it will take what, how much of time? Distance is R, velocity is C, time is, velocity is equal to distance by time, or distance is equal to velocity into time, or time is equal to velocity by distance. So it will be after a time C by R, it will reach the point Ra. If, it, if the charge is at the point A, the location of the charge is the point A, then the observer will find the field which are moving out radially at a distance Ra after a time C by Ra. So if something happens between this time, between the time 0 to C by Ra, the observer at the point Ra will not notice that. Unless it is more than the time is more than C by R. So at C by R, the the observer will notice that there are radially outward fields from a charge which is at a location A, from a charge Q which is at a location A. And then we say that this charge moved to location B and it took time delta T to move to location B, it took time delta T and the distance between A to B is delta Z. So it moved by an amount delta Z. If it has moved by an amount delta Z and it has accelerated, then what will happen? Now once it reaches B, once it reaches B, the observer, if you are an observer, you will observe that the lines are radial up to the point Rb from the point B. The moment you are reaching B, you will find up to the point Rb, the lines are radial, which means after a time of T is equal to how much Rb upon C, you will see up to that point you will see that the lines are radial. But what happens between the time Ra by C and Rb by C is unknown to me or unknown to us. So uh, up to Rb, the time taken is Rb by C, it is radially outward that we know. From Ra, it is radially outward that we know. But between Rb and Ra, it is radially outward or not, we do not know. But what we know is, it is propagating with speed C. 
the field is propagating with speed c but the charge propagated with an acceleration from a to b and its speed changed from u to v now in that process neither u nor v so irrespective of the magnitude of the acceleration neither u nor v is comparable to c a and u and v both are very small compared to c therefore the displacement in charge is very small compared to the displacement in the lines of forces right but we also know that lines of forces are continuous in nature therefore rb and ra will be connected the lines of force will not be disconnected but they are not a straight line from rb to ra the connection will not be along the direction of rb neither it will be along the direction of ra it will be in a different direction so the line is kinked that means this kinked line has two components one component is parallel to ra one component is perpendicular to ra now the component which is parallel to ra we call it er it is radially outward so that is bearing as 1 upon r square the other component which is tangential to r a we call it et it is tangential to r a now let us see what happens to this one this tangential component what happens to this tangential component now we know that the field is in this region the field is propagating from rb to ra in that sphere so if it is a sphere the power will be distributed over the surface of the sphere power will be uniformly distributed over the surface of the sphere right but field is radially outside outward which means there is a component which is tangential to the surface of the sphere and there is a component which is radially outward or perpendicular to the surface of the sphere so that component which is perpendicular is here the other component which is tangential is et now the component which is et is distributed over the complete sphere over this surface of the complete sphere surface is 4 pi r right surface is 4 pi r therefore et will vary on the surface as 1 upon 4 pi r or as 1 upon r so if r has a variation of 1 by r square et has a variation of 1 by r this 1 by r remains fixed as r keeps on increasing why 1 by r is larger than 1 by r square as you keep on increasing r so 1 by r square drops as you keep on increasing r but 1 by r remains so that is what is contributing to the radiation field and that is what is called the radiated field so the tangential component is responsible for radiation maybe we will discuss this one in detail in 
another class or in a seminar in which i can show you the derivation of uh, what we discussed right now and maybe you if you have still any doubt that will be clarified later but for the time being i hope you understood this how an accelerating charge causes radiation because of the kinking because of the kinking of the electric fields instead of radial they become kinked and kinked line has two components er and et er is not responsible for radiation et is responsible for radiation so this is what we have understood from accelerating charge then we considered another case which is a steady state charge oscillation we consider two charges a positive charge and a negative charge separated by a very small distance compared to the wavelength so dl or the separation between these two charges is much smaller compared to the wavelength from where wavelength comes we said that both the charges are oscillating or harmonic in nature so they are oscillating oscillating by oscillation i meant that their amplitude remains fixed but phase changes so for the plus charge it will change as suppose plus charge is plus q so it will change as q cos omega t similarly for the minus charge if it is minus q it will change as minus q cos omega t now let me consider the plus charge positive charge q cos omega t cos omega t maximum value is plus 1 so this charge will have a maximum value of q cos omega t my minimum value is minus 1 so this charge will have a minimum value of minus q so this charge the top one will have plus q and minus q it will oscillate between plus q and minus q similarly the lower charge will oscillate between minus q and plus q over one period they oscillate between plus q minus q and vice versa right so if that of course they are not actually changing their position only their amplitude is varying from plus to minus or minus to plus in a cosine manner or a sinusoidal manner we know if there are two charges opposite charges then lines of forces will gen initiate or start from plus charge end on negative charge minus charge right as the plus charge becomes minus minus charge becomes plus what will happen it will start from bottom charge and end up in the upper charge so it is effectively as if the charges are moving along a line of length dl plus charge is coming from the top to bottom bottom charge is going from the bottom to top it is like a small or elementary called a current element in which the current is varying sinusoidal that we saw in these three pictures the top picture shows the build up of lines of forces when we have positive charge at the top and negative charge at the bottom the mid picture shows and that when both the charges have moved to the center that is both the charges have become zero cos omega t becomes zero when omega t is equal to pi by 2 right huh. 
so when they have moved up with them so that becomes zero so when it becomes zero both the charges are zero the electric lines of forces they become or they form closed loops so once they form closed loops they are detached from the charges because there is no charge the lines of force will form closed loops and they will get detached from the charges in the next cycle what will happen the bottom one becomes positive the top one becomes negative the so lines of forces start building up from the bottom one and they will end in the top one so as the cycle ends again they will form closed loops and they get detached so lines of forces are getting detached which means field is getting detached from the source because the source is disturbed it is oscillating harmonically so the field gets detached so acceleration causes radiation in this case also so the field gets detached and the field moves away so this was for the charge oscillation this is what we saw in the first one then we consider a classic case of a bent transmission line first we consider a straight transmission line which has an open end or open ended transmission line that is what we consider in the beginning now if it is open ended then at the open end the current is zero voltage is maximum the current will be again zero after a lambda by 2 distance from the open end towards the source that is what is shown in the left side picture every lambda by 2 it will be zero every lambda by 4 it will be maximum so the current is zero at the open end then zero at a distance of lambda by 2 and maximum at the center now if that is happening that means on this transmission line there are charges positive charges and negative charges upper line has positive charges maybe lower line has negative charges now and these charges are giving you fields or lines of forces which are outside the transmission line cancelling each other because from the positive charge it will be outward in the direction and for the negative charge it will be inward in the direction so outside the transmission line the outward component and the inward component will cancel out each other but within the transmission line it will be always from the positive charge towards the negative charge so it will be always in one direction so they will not cancel out so they are guided by the transmission line they are stored within the transmission line so energy is stored within the transmission line and guided by the transmission line. now if i bend the transmission line <coughs> which is the second case then what is going to happen if i bend it then if i bend it by 90 degree then the openness of the transmission line remains as it is so at both the ends the current will be minimum and at the center the current will be maximum so i have to bend it where the current was maximum at a distance of lambda by 4 so i have to bend it at a distance of lambda by 4 from the opponent so if i bend it that way then current will be maximum at the center and minimum at the end but now ha huh, something interesting happened in both the arms which are bent the direction of current is changed which means 
the lines of forces that are going out from the upper one and that are coming into the lower one are in the same direction so they will keep on adding because the current is in the same direction the field will keep on adding in phase therefore that will result in a net radiation so instead of being stored within the transmission line this flared operation results in a radiation which moves away from the transmission line so these are the three cases classic cases or classic examples that we consider to start our discussion on antenna then we move to antenna type now what we discussed and what we not discussed let me uh, focus on that we can define the antenna types in terms of their construction if we define uh, divide them in terms of their construction they can be wire antennas they can be microstrip antennas or there can be an array of antennas we discussed all these three types of antennas in antenna types arrays means many antennas more than one antenna at one place not at one point what one place so they are distributed over the space over a small space we distribute many n number of antennas that is array so we discussed about three these three antennas then we looked at aperture antennas what is a reflector antenna and what is a lens antenna these are the three types of antenna that we also consider but we did not discuss uh, uh, briefly on these points but briefly we discussed on two so this is in terms of construction of antenna in terms of operation of antenna we can divide the antenna into three categories one is a narrow band antenna one is a broad band antenna or wide band antenna one is a ultra wide band antenna so these three categories of antennas are in terms of their operation or their frequency of operation narrow band antenna the frequency is very small not the frequency the operating band is very small so you take a frequency f0 the antenna will operate almost at x0 f0 or with a very small deviation from f0 for a wide band antenna you take a frequency f0 antenna will operate properly around f0 over a larger band over a larger frequency so if it is operating over a distance of uh, over a band of f0 minus delta f0 to f0 plus delta f0 then this two delta f0 is approaching zero for a narrow band antenna is large compared to f0 for a wide band antenna and is extremely large for a ultra wide band antenna it is almost over a band of 3 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz that is what is an ultra wide band antenna so these three categories come under a division of antenna based on their operation now but we will discuss about this later not now so then we discussed about a point source 
which is an ideal source or a fictitious source which is like a point radiation coming out from a point from geometry school level you know how to define a point point has existence but no extension so there is no spatial extension of the point but there is an existence so if it is a point source then it will radiate equally in all direction so if i take a sphere and put the point source at the center of the so sphere on the surface of the sphere at each point i will receive same amount of field on the surface of sphere therefore the density power density that i will receive on the surface of the sphere is total power radiated by 4 pi r square so w0 is equal to p rad by 4 pi r square watts per meter square based on that we define radiation intensity to be p rad by 4 pi because it will not be depending on r square irrespective of what is the length of the radius of the sphere the intensity everywhere will be same so it will be p rad total power radiated by 4 pi star radian so w watts per star radian this is what we discussed for point source so once we discussed for point source and we are convinced that fields are coming out from a point source or from any source because of acceleration or because of some disturbance then we started to look into the fields what types of fields can be there or what is the field which is being radiated or which is coming out from the disturbance in that we saw there can be three types of field one is called far field where we the field is completely radiation it contains only radiation components all other components are negligible compared to the radiation components so we neglect them or we dismiss them then we had a near field in which the field is reactive very reactive completely reactive in nature in this case the reactive field dominate although there will be radiating field the reactive field will dominate by reactive what we mean is the field will be stored which means the energy is stored whatever energy in this range or in this region due to this region that will be stored in this region then we saw that there is a radiating near field which is in between the far field and the reactive near field in which there will be radiation but that radiation will not be obeying any rule which means it is indisciplined we cannot define what will be the pattern in which pattern there is a radiation in the far field we can define a clear pattern of radiation in the radiating near field we cannot define a clear pattern of radiation in the near field there is no radiation so please remember that all these three types of field exist in these three region we neglect the portions that we are not mentioning which means in the far field we are not mentioning radiating near field or near field so those two are neglected in the radiating near field we are not mentioning far field or reactive near field so they are neglected in the reactive near field we are neglecting radiating near field and far field so they are neglected or in other words in this region the fields that we are mentioning are dominant so the jar the dominant the left hand side of the picture shows you 
द डिविजन ऑफ द फील्ड फॉर ए स्मॉल एंटेना विच मीन इफ वी पुट द एंटेना विद इन ए स्पीयर एट द सेंटर ऑफ द स्पीयर और इफ वी से दैट वी कैन डिफाइन ए स्पीयर विच कैन completely enclose the antenna at its center and the radius of the sphere is very small compared to the wavelength then we called it a small antenna and the left hand side picture is applicable to that from the left hand side picture what we saw is the radiation field Starts after a distance of five lambda from the antenna. Similarly, we saw that after a distance of lambda by two pi, the radiating near field starts. Similarly, we saw large antenna. If we put the antenna within a box of dimension d. and d is much larger compared to 2.5 lambda then we called it a large antenna in that case the reactive near field is for 0.62 root over of d q by lambda and the far field occurs after a distance of 2 d square by lambda so we defined the range e over which there will be near field there will be far field and in between them there will be radiating near field so this is what we define or what we discussed for field region of course we said that it is like a fresnel field in the radiating near field for the large antenna and it is like a fronhofer field in the far field these two are analogous to optical field then we started looking at from the input impedance and radiation pattern of the antenna we said by definition of antenna we said that antenna is a matching device between the space and the circuit so the antenna has two characteristics it has a circuital characteristics it has a circuital characteristics and it has a radiating characteristic or wave characteristics both are on the antenna on one side it is looking at the circuit on the other side it is looking at the waves when it is looking at the circuit from the circuit point of view we said that the power lost due to the antenna or due to the radiation in the antenna can be modeled as a resistance which we called radiation resistance therefore we can replace the antenna in terms of circuit as an equivalent impedance so that impedance is connected to the circuit which can be your transmitting circuit or receiving circuit and that impedance the impedance that the transmitting circuit or the receiving circuit sees while looking into the antenna which is dead in which is the input impedance of the antenna so that is how we define input impedance of the antenna now the moment we define input impedance the impedance will have a resistive component a reactive component resistance has only resistive component but impedance will have a reactive component this will have a reactive component we will discuss from where this reactive component comes sometimes later